Hi guys and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new, welcome. My name is Crystal and today I'm going to be sharing five simple dinner ideas. Of course any videos or recipes that I do mention will be down in the description. We do have a little dessert treat at the end of this video so stay tuned. So if you guys enjoy this week's what's for dinner don't forget to give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you guys want to see more of these what's for dinners I do have a playlist that I will leave it pinned in the comments. So let's get started with this week's what's for dinner. Don't forget to also share this video. It would really help out my channel. So starting off the week, my mother-in-law invited us over. She made her famous Mexican red rice as well as she made uh, chicharron and salsa. Chicharron is pork and they bought theirs and then she made her homemade salsa and added it. And it looks like I will have to double check with her if she added a little bit more water just to make it more liquidy but it's really really good. It goes all together. Um, I will put down a video on how to make a salsa as well as chicharron and this is the plate right here. My mother-in-law has been inviting us quite often and this is just the way she shares and shows her love through food. And this is what we had for dinner on this day. So on this day, Jorge um, asked to make chicken steak. So I'm starting off by adding the avocado oil spray that I pick up from Costco in the pan. And I really like using this spray to talk about it often. Um, it really gives you that fry kind of taste without using like too much oil. Um, but anyways, um, chicken steak, I've talked about this and actually show this on my channel. Pretty much it's just chicken breast and the one that I'm using is the thin cut from Costco. I really prefer this one over the regular one. Um, it's much thinner and it defrosts even faster than the other one. I don't know, I just really like it. And pretty much what why we call this chicken steak is that we season the chicken as if I'm seasoning steak. It's just this this time coming back from Vegas um, my seasoning was almost done so I just added a little bit extra of this chicken seasoning and as well as just very very little sprinkle of Lori seasoned salt I didn't want to go crazy with the seasoning just a little bit to give it flavor but as you can see I barely add anything to it um, and I wanted to make sure that I just rubbed it in with a little bit of the spatula I just didn't want to leave the seasoning flat on there and pretty much I let this cook on both sides I keep it on a medium to high heat and then I also add black pepper as soon as that's done I flip it over just so that I could get a nice crust and then the rest of the time I put a lid and um, make sure it gets a nice crust but also stays juicy that's my secret to cooking chicken breasts and then right here I did make baked potato on the side and then a super simple salad. We did have family over. This is my plate. This is my baked potato. Oh my goodness. I love baked potato. All I added was salt and pepper, butter, and a little bit of bacon. A si simple uh, salad. And that was uh, dinner on that day. Yeah, he said my body in motion. So on this day, my mother-in-law once again invited us over. She is so sweet and she cooks amazing. Uh, like I've mentioned um, earlier, this is her famous Mexican rice. Here she made tacos de papa and tacos de frijol and they are so good. Um, this is the wok that we got her. I kind of vlogged about it on our anniversary. She's been looking for a wok for such a long time and we were <laughs> so happy to get it. She loved it. Anyways, um, tacos de papa, it's going to sound weird if you don't know what they are, but papa is potato in Spanish and what it's meaning is mashed potatoes so basically you're gonna make mashed potatoes um, any way that you normally would make them and then you make them into tacos and you fry them and the toppings that we like to add is uh, queso cotija which is similar to a parmesan cheese it's a dry cheese but it doesn't taste nothing like it but if you don't have um, queso cotija you can definitely use parmesan cheese we've done that before and then we like to add lettuce and then sour cream but the sour cream uh, just to thin it out and you see how liquidy it is we add a little bit of milk and mix it up you don't have to do that but that's just um, what my mother-in-law did because the day before she did make roll tacos of chicken. It's just we couldn't make it on that day. Um, but you'll see in the at the end of the clip, my brother-in-law was um, having leftovers. And then we love adding tomato to them and then salsa molcajete. If you guys want a video on salsa molca molcajete, I'm actually just going to put a playlist of salsas. And right there you'll see it. 
over here this is my plate like my mouth is watering i love them um, not everyone likes them but i love them and then she also made refried bean ones this is not a vegan option but this is definitely a vegetarian or a meatless option if that is something you're looking for um very very delicious and it's funny because this was on my uh, menu plan for the week I like to write down a couple of days not like the whole month or anything but just a couple of uh, meals I write them down on my phone and my notes and this was on the meal plan my daughter she made a heart out of refried beans this is a salsa once again the best um, with the molcajete the tacos and my brother-in-law right there and that was dinner on that day so on this day, we made some frozen pizza that I picked up from Costco. Um, to save space in my freezer, I always cut the instructions out if I've never made something before. And then I just uh, get rid of the box, we just recycle it. This is what it looked like. You just follow the directions, you take off the film, and you bake it in this tray. Um, since it's frozen, I was able to like split it half pepperoni, half veggies, because my kids do prefer either a cheese or a pepperoni pizza. Um, this was pizza was good. It wasn't like the best, um, but everyone really liked it. And then I just paired it with a salad. Like it couldn't get more simpler. Um, these dinner ideas, but they are good and they're quick and easy. So that's why I like to share these every Friday. Sometimes we have some fancy ones, and sometimes we just have frozen pizza. Uh, so the salad had some apples my girls just had the apples on the side and then we added some dry blueberries this is my husband's plate and then some bacon bits and that was dinner on this day easy and delicious and definitely quick Yes, you read correctly, I am making Spam sandwiches. I did pick these up a couple of months ago at Costco when they were on sale. Um, the first time that I tried Spam was when I was dating Jorge. I know not everyone likes Spam, so if you want to make this, a simple option to trade off would be ham, bologna, or even make a BLT. Uh, so I just cut them up like this and let's hear some sizzle action. I don't know about you guys but I always love a little sizzle action <laughs> it's like music to my ears so I've had this in my freezer for a couple of months now and I wanted to use it up um, if you guys love waffle fries I really recommend picking them up at Walmart the great value brand they taste pretty good and they're very easy to make they crisp up pretty quick compared to um, deep frying them or trying a different brand actually deep frying would be better sorry it's a little late editing um, but yeah I just follow the directions and put them on the tray and then just bake them in the oven they're super simple and they're pretty good my kids and my husband really like them um, but if you don't have these well, waffle cut fries these crinkle cut fries a good option would just be chips uh, this is the spam all cooked up it's just pan fried because it's already fully cooked and then I had two lonely aguacates that need to get used up I just smashed that up I didn't add any lime I didn't add any seasoning just like that and then I had some American cheese on the side some lettuce and then I have a couple of condiments that you'll see right now and then I'm just using good old white bread I'm gonna be toasting this up just to make it a little bit special so it doesn't feel like we're just eating sandwiches ta-da magic anyways <laughs> um, so now I'm just gonna be adding um, some mayonnaise Jorge likes it with mayonnaise and then just a little bit of mustard I'm the one that switched it up and you'll see my toppings right now but what I really like about having spam in my uh, stock pile or like just having it make sure that we have some in the house it's that it's very versatile you can make sandwiches uh, for dinner or you can make them for lunch you can even add like a fried egg if you like that and make like a breakfast sandwich or you can simply make um, some steamed rice and have spam and rice 
or a fried rice there's so many different ways of making it but like i said if you don't like spam you can always make like a blt switch it up with bacon you can use turkey you can use ham bologna uh you can even make yourself a tuna sandwich completely different but just keeping it simple and very budget friendly if you get it on a good deal at costco like i did um, and then I'm adding the lettuce and then Jorge loves these spam sandwiches. We don't make them often um, But when we do um, he really enjoys it. So then I added three spam slices the second one Yeah, cuz he went for seconds um, He told me to add guacamole the first one He's like no no just like that and then if you like spicy food and have never had a jalapeno in your sandwich You are definitely missing out if you like spicy. I'm just saying I'm just saying uh, if you like it a little extra, it's so good. It's that pickly. I don't know. It's just amazing. And then for fun, let me know. Do you guys ever cut your sandwiches? If you eat sandwiches, do you cut them in half? Do you cut them, uh, what is this, to the side like a little triangle? Do you cut them in fourths? If you cut your sandwich, which way do you cut it? I always cut it like this because it makes me feel super, super fancy and cute. Um, and that was Jorge's sandwich and right now you guys will see mine. I switched mine up a little bit But it was so good really really good and then just served it with the waffle cut fries Like I said, they cooked up pretty quick while I was uh, toasting up bread. So that was dinner on this day Let me show you my plate And this was dinner on this day. Jorge was just saying it's so, so good. It either could have been because we were really hungry or it's just we haven't had Spam sandwiches. Anyways, it was really delicious and super simple, like I said. Um, adding that wakate and then I also added Thousand Island dressing. I know a little extra, a little different, but it was really, really good. So I did say we were going to make something sweet and of course it's going to be very simple. We're going to be making some hot chocolate chocolate abuelita. I feel like this is a fall must have. I've talked about this on my channel and it's super simple. I'm making it a little different. My mother-in-law suggested that I added um, some evaporated milk. Usually I just add milk and the hot chocolate but here we're adding half a gallon of milk and you can use any milk that you have. I have low fat so that's what I'm using and then I'm going to be adding half of the can of the evaporated milk and then I'm just using my kitchen mama uh, can opener I really love this can opener um, it was sent out to me but I do have a discount code I'll put it down in the description and I'll put it right now right here if that is something you're interested I really like it because you can open big cans and it does it all by itself so if your hands really hurt or if you're busy doing something else this can opener is amazing and it does it all for you so I really like it and um, so I'm going to be adding half of this can as well 
and then um, I'm gonna be adding three of the chocolates abuelitas now this chocolate abuelita if you've never seen it before I pick up mine at Costco but they sell it normally and even at Walmart like any grocery store at least they do in my area it has tons of flavor and spices um, I honestly cannot drink any other hot chocolate but abuelita um, and so do my girls we've tried other kinds and we really don't like them we just stick to this one it has tons of flavor um, and it smells so good so you just open the packet and I'll show you what the little chocolate looks like as just like I said tons and tons of flavor and we buy these every year at Costco and we just have them when it gets cold uh, we make hot chocolate um, so I'm gonna add three of these and you can always add less or more um, I was making a good amount because we were it was for us five but also I was um, making some for my in-laws and for some neighbors um, that were visiting my in-laws um, so pretty much you just want to keep stirring you want to keep this on a medium heat you want this warm enough where the chocolate will melt but also um, where it will um, boil over so we just keep mixing and mixing and after a while Jorge is like do you want me to help you so you can finish doing what you need to do and I was like yeah thank you babe he's so sweet um, so he was just mixing it and then now we're serving it and everyone gets their favorite mugs. Do you guys have your own favorite mug like for coffee or for hot cocoa? I love different mugs but since I hardly don't drink hot coffee we don't really have too many mugs but we have some cute ones for the kids and I. Um, and this one, this Hello Kitty one, Jorge bought this one a while for me. Or he got it from work. I don't remember a couple of years ago but it's one of my favorite ones. Um, I think Estrella, my youngest, used that one. Um, besides Hello Kitty, we love Disney. Uh, so we always have different kind of mugs. And this one's one of my favorites. It's one of my oldest daughter. I need to get two more. One for um, Emily and one for Estrella so I could have their picture mug and use all three of them. Um, and then that's um, zero. And then pray more, worry less. Like how cute is that? And then we put the rest of the hot cocoa and Jorge delivered it to my in-laws. And then the girls like to add whipped cream and marshmallows. That's totally optional, but it does make it more fun. I was out of whipped cream, so we only added a marshmallow. And then, I don't know about you, but we can't have no hot chocolate abuelita without pan. Uh, my mother-in-law says, y peor con pan, which means, and worse with bread. This is a Mexican pan dulce called a concha. This is Esme's favorite pan dulce. Let me show you mine right now. Look at how cute that cup is. And I got it on clearance last year. Um, this is my childhood pan dulce. It is like a cake. It's similar to a cake, but it tastes different. That icing is like a glaze. And you can find them in pink with sprinkles. And it's so good. This is Jorge's pan dulce. It's called an elote. Um, a corn because it's shaped like a corn. Uh, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this week's What's for Dinner. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you on the next one. You look so beautiful And I'm so lucky to be yours